We want to continue our study of factoring polynomials completely by talking about how you factor trinomials. Okay, so we're going to talk about very specific trinomials to factor. So we're going to factor trinomials of, of the following forms. The first way will be trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Okay, this is where b and c are real numbers. Okay, this is this method is actually pretty easy. The way I factor this is I I I, I factor this by completing a number game, and that'll make sense as you watch my lecture. <coughs> and then the second way is going to be factoring trinomials of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, this is where a, b, and c are real numbers. Okay, and a does not equal 1. You can think of this as the a here, but with a is equal to 1. But what you're going to notice for this method here, you're going to see a number in front of the x squared term, okay, for this trinomial. All right, I'm going to show you a method called the ac method. And the ac method is going to seem pretty confusing at first. Um, but it's actually, it, it, once you see, once I'm going to do three examples of it, after you do the first example, you're going to see that it, it's actually, it's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. It's just kind of like following an algorithm to understand how you factor these trinomials. Okay, so we'll start with these ones, these, the, these easy ones, okay? All right. So this is also called factoring trinomial whose leading coefficient is one, so... So you're going to factor x squared plus bx plus c. And my number game is this. You're looking for two numbers. And we'll call those numbers m and n. OK, such that when you take m and n and you add them together, they're equal to b. And when you multiply m and n, they're equal to c, this, this, this constant term. So let me show you. So here's going to be the first example. Let's look at x squared plus 13x plus 40. OK, so you're looking for two numbers. So m plus n, they have to, they have to when you add them together, they have to be 13. And m times n, when you multiply them, they have to be 40. Well, you can go through and take, all right, so look at 40. What are, what are two numbers that multiply to 40? It's 1 and 40. Well, they don't go to 13. It's 2 and 20. Uh, they don't add to 13. Uh, let's see, what else? It's 4 and 10. Uh, they don't add to, to 13. How about 5 and 8? Well, look, 5 times 8 uh, would multiply to 40, and 5 times 8 would then become 13. Okay? So once you do that, once you've found the two numbers... Okay. Then this x squared plus bx plus c, then it literally just becomes x plus m times x plus n. So you can immediately factor this as x plus 5 times x plus 8. And it doesn't matter if you put the 8 first or the 5 second. It, it doesn't matter. And this works. Like if you check this, if you foil this out, watch what happens. X times X gets me X squared. X times 8X gets me, or X times 8 gets me 8X. 5 times X gets me 5X. And then 5 times 8 gets me 40. And then look, you combine the middle terms. And we got it. Okay, <clears throat> so this is just going to involve a, a, a little bit of practice, okay? So let's just do a bunch of examples just so you can see and, and you'll see how I approach it. So here will be the first one, or the next one that we're going to do. Let's look at x squared minus 9x plus 20. 
So now this is interesting. You're looking for two numbers that add to a negative but multiply to a positive. Well, the only way you can have that is they both have to be negative, okay? So how about mm, negative five and negative four? Yeah, look, negative five plus negative four gets me negative nine. Negative five times negative four gets me positive 20. So this would immediately factor as, I'm not gonna write x plus minus five, I'll just write it as x minus five times x minus four. Let's try this one. Let's look at x squared minus 7x minus 18. So they're going to sum to a negative and multiply to a negative. Okay, so what that means is one number has to be positive and one number has to be negative. So you might think, oh, okay, what about 9 and negative 2? But 9 plus negative 2 is positive 7. So it's going to have to be negative 9 and 2. So this will immediately factor into x minus 9 times x plus 2. All right, let's try this one. Let's look at x squared plus 10x plus 21. Well, what two numbers multiply to 21 sum to 10? Uh, 7 and 3. So then this is just x plus 7 times x plus 3. Let's try this one. Let's look at x squared minus 8x plus 12. So two numbers multiply to positive 12, yet sum to negative 8. So they both have to be negative again. And hopefully, you know, you, you can just see it. It's going to have to be negative 6 and negative 2, right? Negative 6 times negative 2 gets me positive 12. And negative 6 plus negative 2, boom, gets me negative 8. So this is going to factor into x minus 6 times x minus 2. All right, let's take a look at this last one here. Let's look at x squared minus 8x minus 9. This is weird, okay? So they're going to sum to a negative, but, multiple, and, but also multiply to a negative. That means one has to be positive and one has to be negative. Well, check this out. What if I look at negative 9 and positive 1? Negative 9 times positive 1 gets me negative 9. But look, negative 9 plus 1, ah, that gets me negative 8. So this is going to factor into x minus 9 times x plus 1. So we got it. OK. So now let's talk about, th this is why I call it it's a number game. You're just, you're just trying to find the two numbers. You're just looking, you're just looking for the two numbers. Now let's talk about when the leading coefficient is not 1. OK, so this is going to be factoring. ax squared plus bx plus c. And as I show you the, the, the method, I'm going to do an example side by side with it. Okay, So I want to factor uh, 6x squared plus 7x plus 2. All right, so notice you can't play the number game here. You can't say, oh, okay. Um, uh, you can't you can't say you know what two numbers multiply to two and sum to seven. Um, they're, they're, you know or sum to seven excuse me multiply to two. Sorry about that. Sum to seven multiply to two. There there are none. Okay, so this is why it's called the AC method. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find a times c. So you're literally going to go what's a times c. So in this case you're going to find a times c, so you're going to go 6 times 2, which is 12. Now you're going to play a number game. You're looking for two numbers. And we'll call those numbers m and n, such that m, um, m times n that's going to be equal to this AC that you just found. And then M plus N is going to be equal to B. I know it seems a little weird. So we're looking for two numbers over here. Okay, M times N is going to be 12. And M plus N is going to be this middle term, 7. I don't know. So, so what, what 
you know, what two numbers multiply to 12 and sum to 7? Well, it's 3 and 4, right? So after you found those two numbers, what you're going to do is you're going to split the middle term. Okay, so you're going to take this. You're going to rewrite ax squared plus bx plus c. You're going to rewrite it as ax squared plus mx plus nx plus c. And the reason you can do that, so look, I, my two numbers, m and n, are 3 and 4. So I'm going to take 6x squared plus 7x plus 2, and I'm going to rewrite it now. The 7x is going to go away, and it's going to be written as 3x plus 4x. And the reason you can do that is because 3x plus 4x is still 7x. And then look, I have 1, 2, 3. I have four-term polynomial. Then the last thing you're going to do is factor by grouping. So here, I'm going to take the first two terms, and I'm going to take the last two terms. So what gets factored out of here? 6x squared plus 3x. A 3x comes out. You're left with 2x plus 1. I'm going to factor out a 2 of the 4x and 2. Wow, look at this. Now they both have a 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1, I'm going to factor that out. And I'm left with 3x plus 2. And if you FOIL this, if you were to FOIL this, you know you'd get, just to show you it works, 2x times 3x gets me 6x squared. 2x times 2 gives me plus 4x. 1x times 3x gets me 3x. And 1 times 2 gets me 2. Wow, 4x plus 3x, it works. So this AC method, it totally, it, 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 it totally works. <clears throat> All right, let me try. Let me just walk you through two more, and it, and they they're gonna go. You know, it, it seems like this is long, but after you know, once you've mastered this AC method, it's it, it literally goes. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It goes really really quickly. All right, so let's factor this one. Let's look at three x squared plus 14x plus 8. So step one, find AC. So that's 3 times 8. That gets me 24. So your next step, you're looking for two numbers. When you multiply them, you get 24. And when you add them, you get this middle term, 14. Well, what two numbers multiply to 24 and sum to 14? Hmm, I think it's 12 and 2. So once you do that, next you split the middle term. So you're going to write this as 3x squared. And it doesn't matter, literally doesn't matter which term you put first. You could put the 2 here or the 12, it doesn't matter. Next, final step, you're going to factor by grouping. So it looks like a 3x is the greatest common factor here. So you're left with x plus 4. It looks like a 2 is the greatest common factor here. You're left with x plus 4. And wow, they both have an x plus 4. So you're going to factor out an x plus 4. And you got it. Boom. All right, I'm going to do an, uh, uh, another one next. And you're going to see that it's... Um, <clears throat> It's going to involve a negative, so you're going to have to be a little bit careful here. All right, so let's factor this one. So let's factor 8x squared plus 2x minus 3. All right, so this minus 3, so when you go to find AC, here it's still 8 times minus 3, so the negative always goes along with the number. So this is minus 24. All right, so next, you're looking for two numbers. When you multiply them, you get minus 24. Ooh, and when you add them, you get positive 2. 
So one has to be negative and one has to be positive to multiply to a negative. And of those two numbers, the, the larger number has to be the negative number here. So I think if, if you tried negative six and four, uh, no, because then when you add them, you would get negative two. So it has to be um, six and minus four. And I misspoke here because it's, it, the sum is positive. The larger number has to be positive. My, my, I misspoke there, I'm sorry. So you see here now I found the two numbers. Six times minus four gets me minus 24 and six plus minus four gets me two. So listen, split the middle term. And when, when you have one negative, one positive, all right, this is my tip. When one negative and one positive, put the negative number first. So in my next term, when I split the middle term, I'm gonna put the negative four first. So it's gonna be eight x squared minus four x plus six x minus three. All right, now let's factor by grouping. So let's group the first two together. Let's group the next two together. So what could you factor out of this? It looks like you could factor out a 4x and then you'll be left with 2x minus one. Over here, it looks like you could factor out a three and again, you're left with 2x minus one. And look, you, you know, hopefully you see the pattern. If you do this AC method correctly, then look, they're gonna each have this, this common factor here. So it's gonna be 2x minus one comes out and you're left with 4x plus three. All right, class, uh, as always with, with these trinomials you know practice is going to make perfect on these so please you know keep practice 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 and they're going to get easier and easier and easier as you do them